talk about solving quadratic equations by graphing and factoring. And really, we're going to solve equations by factoring. We're not going to do the graphing part. We're going to solve them by factoring. Okay, section 5.3. If you can recall, we did some factoring in chapter 6. Very similar. Okay, very similar type of factoring uh, that we did in chapter 6. We're solving quadratic equations by factoring. Section 5.3. Hopefully, for the most part, this should be some very similar review of what we did in, or what you would have done in Algebra 1. Okay, now again, factoring means you're going to pull out kind of commonalities. You're going to simplify it back down or reverse it. All right, so vocabulary here. The zero of a function, this is what we're going to be finding. We're going to be finding zeros. Uh, the zero of a function, for the function f, any number x such that f of x equals zero. That's what we're going to be doing. All day today, we're going to be setting f of x equal to 0. We're going to be substituting f of x, or 0 in for f of x. We're trying to find the zeros of it, okay? Because it's a lot easier to solve when you solve it with the zeros. So we're going to be given functions such that f of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. And really, instead of f of x, we're going to say 0 equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. And then we're going to kind of what I call defoil or unfoil. Okay, now remember, FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. Now, FOIL is what you do when you have problems that are like x plus 3 and x minus 1. Okay, FOIL, you know, first, outer, inner, last. We're going backwards. Okay, so we're going to get answers that kind of look like this in a sense. We're going to defoil. We're going to factor it. Um, the root of an equation is any value of the variable that makes the equation true. Again, we're going to find the roots that are 0. Okay, we're going to set the roots equal to zero. So same idea. Kind of these two are kind of tied together in a sense. We're going to factor it. Give me something like that. It's going to be in the red there. And then set it equal to zero and solve. And then again, we've already talked about it, but a binomial is a polynomial with two terms. And then a trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. And we usually think of a bicycle and a tricycle when we think of those two words. Okay. Uh, here's the process of solving quadratics. And again, today this is like the shortcut method, okay? Uh, the shortcut method is only used when, if you look in front here, there is no A, or the A is 1, essentially. This is when you can use the shortcut. If A is not 1, uh, we use what's called the quadratic formula. Is anybody familiar with the quadratic formula? It's very long. We're actually going to do that uh, probably at the end of this week, maybe even next week, okay? But the shortcut is used when A is 1. When you have A, that's a number. So, for example, if I were to have, like, 3x squared here, I would not use the shortcut, and I would actually use the quadratic formula. All right? But you can use the shortcut here to solve these. Um, and, again, recall, the standard form of an equation is AX squared plus BX plus C. Now, you're going to hear me say this a lot today, but when we factor, we want to think of two things. It's kind of good number sense. We want to think of something that multiplies to get negative 15. And why do I have negative 15? Because that's my constant there and then adds to get 2, and 2 is my B term. So when you think of two numbers, they're going to multiply to get C, multiply to get negative 15, add to get 2, add to get that B term. What are those two numbers, anybody? 5 and negative 3. Does everybody see that? Okay, that's the hardest part today. Some students were really struggling earlier, and they were having struggles with that number sense. It's just, again, what's going to multiply to get negative 15, add to get 2? Well, 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 5 plus a negative 3 is a 2. So notice, I rewrite it. That's how you factor it. I rewrite it now. x plus 5 and x minus 3. That's like the backwards form of foiling. For instance, if I were to foil this right here, if I were to foil this, I would end up with x squared plus 2x minus 15. So I'm kind of going backwards through those steps. Uh, now, because I'm setting it equal to 0, Okay, I'm setting it equal to zero. There's kind of like an invisible multiplication symbol. Let's see here. There's like an invisible multiplication symbol there. That's how you foil. Because we're foiling, we're multiplying. So now I set each of them equal to zero. Why? Because what's the only way to multiply and get to zero? You have to multiply by zero. So why? I set them equal to zero then. So x plus 5 equals zero, which means x has to equal negative 5. Or x minus 3 is equal to zero, which means x has to equal Three. Okay, so we're setting both of them equal to zero. All right, um, and then again at the bottom there, you can just check it. You can plug it back in and check, and they would check out.
But this is the process that we're going to be doing today. Uh, number one here. So let's try these. We're going to solve these quadratics. We're going to go through these step by step. Um, the first couple, notice there's not a constant term, so there's a little bit of a different process when there's not a constant term. Uh, but number one, I have f of x equals 4x squared minus 24x. Okay. Now, again, I want to factor this. I want to factor. And again, what I mean by factor, I want to kind of undistribute or defoil. Any one of those two things, undistribute or defoil. What does 4x squared minus 24x both have in common? What do they both have in common, Mark? X, and they also have a, a 4x. So do you notice here, they pulled the 4x out. It's undistributing, pulling that 4x out. So when I undistribute that 4x, I'm left with x minus, John? X minus 6. Very good. And where do I get the 6 from? I get 24 divided by 4. Okay. So I take the 4 out of the front side. 4 comes out. 24 divided by 4 is 6. There's two X's here. I pulled 1X out, leaving me with 1X. 1X here, pulled it out. I have no X's. Okay. So this is my factored form. Now I set each of these equal to 0. So I have... 4x equals 0, and x minus 6 equals 0. Again, 4x equals 0, x minus 6 equals 0. Set each group equal to 0, and now you just solve. 4x equals 0 means x has to equal 0. In the second half, x minus 6 equals 0. That means x has to equal 6. So I get the answers, x equals 0 and 6. Okay, and that just comes from that factoring. All right, notice here, um, this one I do not have a constant term. They both have x's, so I just pulled out what they have in common. Okay, because problem number two, this is a different type of problem. These two different types of problems that we're going to solve. Very similar um, process in the end, but the beginning process is different on both of these. So number two, this is a trinomial now. Now we have a trinomial here. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, anytime I have a trinomial, now I want to think of that, what's going to do? Multiply to get 3 and add to get 4, because I'm looking at my B and my C terms. So what are two numbers that are going to multiply to get 3, add to get 4? I get 3 and 1. Does everybody agree? 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Now I factor it, giving me X plus 3 and x plus 1. Okay, so the goal of this number sense problem here is so I can factor. I'm defoiling that. So x plus 3, x plus 1. Now I set each of these quantities equal to 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. So they're both equal to 0. Let's look at the left side. x plus 3 equals 0 means x has to equal, John? x equals negative 3. Or the right side, x plus 1 equals 0 means x has to equal, Frank, negative 1. Those are my two answers right there. Okay. Do you guys recall doing some factoring in Algebra 1? Hopefully. Um, if you can recall that, that's a lot of what we're going to do today. It's all about factoring. All right. Notice now number 3. x squared minus 5x plus 4. I have that trinomial. I have a trinomial here. So anytime I have that trinomial, I want to think of numbers that are going to multiply to get C, or that constant term, and are going to add to get B, or my linear term. So what are two numbers that are going to multiply to get 4 and add to get negative 5? What do you get? Negative 4 and negative 1. Very good. Negative 4 and negative 1. I agree. Negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. Negative 4 plus negative 1 is a negative 5. So now I factor it, giving me x minus 5 or sorry, not 5, x minus 4, and x minus 1, and I set them equal to 0, zero. because I want to try and find the zeros, the roots of this, so I set them equal to 0, okay, and then I take each part basically, you can write them all separately, that's okay, or I can just think of each part, 
So x minus 4 equals 0. What minus 4 is going to be 0, Sage? What minus 4 is 0? 4. So x equals 4. That's one answer. And then I think of my second answer. Sophie, what minus 1 is 0? 1. Nice job. So my answers are 4 and 1. How are we feeling? Pretty good? Let's try number four. Notice number four is a different problem from two and three. Number four is more similar to number one. Notice the differences. Four is very similar to one. So when I have a problem like number one, I want to kind of undistribute. What do they both have in common that I can pull out of? Number four, what do they both have in common, Justin, that I can pull out? A 3x. Good work, sir. So I factor by pulling out or undistributing a 3x. Giving me 3x and then parentheses, Justin. X plus 4. X plus 4. And I said equal to what, Justin? I'm setting all these equal to 0. Okay, so I'm setting all of them equal to 0. Great. And now I solve for each part. So again, 3x equals 0 means x has to equal 0. And do the second part. x plus 4 equals 0 means x has to equal what, Jarrett? Um, I'm not sure, negative 4. Negative 4. Nice job. And where do I get that from? I can just set them up separately as well if I wanted to. So 3x equals 0 and x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, I can set them up separately if I wanted to. All right, now again, notice. All right, next step here. Going to get a little bit tougher, okay? Uh, we have the difference of squares now. We did some of this when we did the polynomial factoring. All right, but the difference of squares, and I'll give you an example problem here. But the difference of squares happens when um, I have two terms that kind of multiply to get B, add to get C, essentially. Uh, so, for example, if I had X squared minus 9, now, we had problems like that when we did chapter 6, okay? And what did I tell you to think of? I told you to think of really as x squared plus 0x minus 9. Now, they don't include the 0x because you don't need to include a 0. And it's the same process. So what's going to multiply to get negative 9, add to get 0? And our two numbers were? Anybody? 3 and negative 3. Okay, so that factored as x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay, that's what's called that difference of squares. Okay, those middle terms cancel out because you have a positive and a negative, essentially. They're going to cancel out. Um, and then when you have those difference of squares, you factor down, and you're actually going to get the same answer, which would be x equals 3 and negative 3. It's still the same thing. Okay, um, we had a couple problems like this in Chapter 6 as well. And again, it's two squares, so it's a difference of squares. A uh, shortcut way to think of that is just really just take the square root. Uh, square root of 16 is 4. So I get 4x minus 5. And the square root of uh, 25 then was 5. So you take the square root of the x, the square root of the constant, and that's the same thing as that difference of squares. The same is true up here, even with this. You can think of it as a 1. It's the square root and the square root, essentially. And it's a difference because you have a positive and a negative. Okay? Let's try a couple of those. So number five here. I have 4x squared equals 49. Okay, 4x squared equals 49. Um, they subtracted 49 over because we always want to set it equal to 0. Okay, they subtracted the 49 so we can set it equal to 0 is what happened there. Now, this is one of those difference of squares where a is not 1. So the best shortcut is to think of the square root. So what's the square root of 4, Bailey? 2. So I get um, 2x squared, basically. What's the square root of 49, Bailey? 7. Now I get that, that um, difference of squares, 2x minus 7 and 2x plus 7 because the middle terms would cancel out. Okay, so you don't have the middle terms there. You think of the difference of squares. I'm sorry, it's still equal to zero. Still equal to zero there. 
now it gets actually a little bit tougher to solve because X is not one. So now it's kind of helpful to set up each ones. So for example, I will set up 2X minus seven equals zero and 2X plus seven equals zero. Set up each one separately so I can visually see it's gonna be a fraction. It's not as easy here because X is, or the linear term is not one. And then I basically just solve for X. So I'm solving for X in both of them and I would get X equals seven halves and then I get x equals negative 7 halves on both of those, actually. Okay. Same process there. Number six now. Now we're back to a trinomial. I know it's kind of tough keeping all of them, can, all of them straight. It's kind of very similar process in all of them. You just got to recognize when there's a linear term and when there's not. Um, so on this one, again, we set it equal to always what, Mark? We always want to set it equal to? Zero. Zero. So they subtracted 8x, so we can set it equal to 0 visibly on that right side. Now I'm thinking of factoring here. So I have a trinomial. So I'm thinking of multiplies to get 16, adds to get a negative 8. So I'm thinking two numbers. They need to multiply to get 16, add to get negative 8. What are you thinking, Mark? It is negative four or negative four. Nice job, sir. So when I factor it, I really get here x minus four and x minus four equals zero. Now I'll challenge you a little bit. Think here a little bit. What's another way to write that? Instead of x minus four, x minus four, how could I write that also? Yes, sir. Nice job. X minus four squared. That'd be the same exact thing. And what does x have to be here then? So x minus 4 equals 0. x has to be? Uh, positive 4. Positive 4. Is that the only answer on this one? Yeah. Yeah, because they're both x minus 4, right? You could say 4 and 4, but then you're just saying 4 twice. Same answer. This one only has one answer, actually. Okay. It's a nice way of doing that, bro. All right. Take a couple seconds and try these three. Now, I will give you a hint here on number eight because you will see, a, like, I think there's one problem like this on your assignment. Notice there's a number in front of the x squared here. Does everybody see that? There's a number in front of the x squared. You can only use the shortcut when there's like a coefficient of one. So on this one, you actually want to pull out a two. So this is really going to be g of x equals two parentheses x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, and again, you do have one problem like that, I think, on your assignment, and it just wants you to undistribute it first before you factor it. All right, but again, think of what multiplies to get c adds to get b on all these. All right, take a couple seconds, factor these, and solve them. All right, it looks like a lot of us did some pretty good work here. Uh, number 7. Number 7, what are the two numbers that multiply to get negative 18, add to get 7? Bailey? 9 and negative 2, so I factor it. 0 equals x plus 9 and x minus 2. And I set each of them equal to 0, which means my answers are what then, Bailey? x equals negative 9 and 2. Good work. Now, number 8. I know, a little more difficult because I put that 2 in there, that darn 2. Really, once you pull that 2 out, because there's no variable out front there, it doesn't affect the problem because I'm still wanting to factor or set equal to zero. I can take zero times two and I'm still gonna get zero. So that two does not affect that problem. Once you pull it out, you can kind of just really leave it off to the side. You don't need it. So then I factor what's inside here. So I'm going to factor x squared plus two x minus three. So two numbers that multiply to get negative three, add to get two, and I get what, John? Sorry. I was looking at the screen. What multiplies to get negative 3 adds to get a positive 2? Uh, negative 1. Negative 3. 3, negative 1. 3 and negative 1. So when I factor this, I actually get 0 equals. Now that 2 is out front there. It doesn't really affect it. But 2 parentheses x plus 3 and x minus 1. And again, because that 2 does not affect it, it's just multiplying by constant. It will not change it. 
I think now what plus three is zero and what minus one is zero, I get answers of what then, John? What plus three is zero? So actually it was negative three. What minus one is zero? I get negative three and one. Okay. Again, don't worry about that too. You just once you pull it out, it's kind of just out there in front. It's a constant. It's not a big deal. You don't need it. Number nine. Uh, what's going to multiply to get twenty-five? Add to get negative ten. Phil. Negative five and negative five. So negative five and negative five, which means I factor that. So I get zero equals x minus five and x minus five, which means my answer is what then here, Sage? x equals? x equals five and five, or really just x equals five. Nice job. All right, um, these next three, these are a little more challenging. Okay, these are some of those last couple steps. Um, this number 10, I would look to undistribute first. Okay, I'll help you out here. I would look to undistribute. So pull out where they both have in common. Uh, number 11, think of x squared plus 0x minus 25 would help. And then number 12, that's the difference of squares. I would look at my square roots and difference of squares, okay? Take a couple seconds to try these. All right, let's try number 10 here. Let's go through this. Now, some of you, after a little bit, got some good work here. You see there has to undistribute. So they both have an 8x in common. You, a lot of you saw that. That's great. So I pull the 8x out. Now, again, when I undistribute, I'm basically dividing out because distributing is multiplying, so undistributing is dividing. So I get 8x parentheses. 2x minus 1. Yes, I need that 1. Again, when you think of 1, a lot of you sometimes want to think of 0 because you're pulling it out, but you need the placeholder of a 1. Okay? Again, think of 8 divided by 8. 8 divided by 8 is still 1. I get the 1 there. So now I set each of those equal to 0. You can think of it as 8x equals 0 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. Set so each of them equal to 0. And I get two answers. My two answers are Jack. You would. It would be one half. Nice shot. Zero and one half. Because I would add the one and then divide by two and you get one half. Good work, sir. Number 11 is that difference of squares. So two numbers and multiply to get negative 25, add to get zero. What do you get when you factor that one, Andy? Five and negative five. Yeah, five and negative five. So that difference of squares. So really I have x plus five and x minus five equals zero, which means my two answers are what, Andy? X equals negative 5 and 5. And the hardest one, number 12. This is the hard one because it's a difference of squares, but there's a number in front of X squared. It's tough. Um, you kind of got to think of it as square roots. Helps you out a lot on this one. What's the square root of 9? 3. So when I think of this, I'm really going to do 3X minus, what's square root of 49? 7. 7. So I get 3X minus 7. And the difference of squares is the same thing, but different signs. I got 3x minus 7 and 3x plus 7. And I set those equal to 0. Okay, and that's the difference of squares, taking the square root. Now I set each of those equal to 0, and I get answers of, does anybody feel confident they got them? Seven thirds and negative seven thirds. Nice job. x equals 7 thirds and negative 7 thirds. Good work. It's awesome. All right, here's your assignment. 